there currently an electric vehicle recession going on? What is happening, investors? It is your boy, Jack. I am not a financial advisor. And today, we're going to be taking a look at what drives electric vehicle growth, what drives electric vehicle sales on a broader scale. And we're going to have a little bit more of a focus on Tesla. Now, the reason for that is a lot of what we're going to speak about today comes down to Morgan Stanley and the analyst Adam Jonas. A lot of you guys will be aware of him, especially any Tesla investors out there. He's a very, very well-known name. But there's a lot to speak about in today's video. And again, this is a video that you'll be able to bring to any of your EV investments. We're going to try ask a lot of tough questions today and answer those questions as well in regards to what you realistically should and should not be investing in going forwards. The one thing I came across recently is this, the analyst at Morgan Stanley. And again, the analyst in question here is Adam Jonas. Electric cars face oversupply. Now, this has never been an issue ever for EV stocks. There has always been enough supply for the demand. But if you followed Tesla's most recently, you know, uh, delivery report, you will know that they actually had more cars left over than they moved. Tesla's share price may face a downward pressure next year. And there's a lot more to it than just that that we are going to be covering. Alongside that, we're going to be taking a look at some mega trends driving the adoption of electric vehicles and what is driving EV market growth. But before that, well, before we even get into that, I want to ask you to hit that juicy like button for your boy. I really would appreciate it. If you end up enjoying this video and getting some value, perhaps consider subscribing as well for more content. So on the screen right now, I've got some really high production value. But what has brought down EV stocks over the last year or two years even at this stage? I mean, just some of the big ones off the top of my head, some of the obvious ones recessionary fears and recession full stop. Overall, consumer spending is down. I mean, we've seen it quarter in quarter out month in month out we've seen some uh, some poor cpi numbers a lot of the time especially when it does come to cars and with that being said car sales are at decade lows in the us i mean that they are literally lower than they've been for so long for multiple reasons one people aren't spending as much money people don't have as much money to spend the, the likes of people working from home may mean that people aren't as willing to buy new cars if they're not going to be using them as much more competition means less market share for the bigger names again you look at this with tesla in particular and you can see that they had a lot of market share and it's slowly coming down as the likes of legacy oems come and get more involved as your gms your fords etc have more evs and are going to get more ev market share that's you know again it's it's not going to let anybody have a monopoly or anywhere near a monopoly anytime soon interest rates and lack of capital in general is hurting certain companies so especially the ones who aren't self-funding you know the likes of your Teslas and Rivians may have enough capital on hand, but if you look at the likes of maybe our Lucid Motors, our Charge Points, even our Neos, they're more than likely going to have to go through more share dilution in the relatively near futures. And with interest rates being at such bad places, uh, again, that's not good for these companies in the short term and can lead to, you know, um, electric vehicles going down over, over the next considerable period of time. Um, aside from that shortage of key parts, predominantly battery supply chain issues. I mean, we've seen this with Tesla. We've seen it with every Chinese automaker. We've seen it with everyone. Rare minerals, rare metals in particular are a big issue. And again, that's why a lot of EV stocks maybe had to drop their guidance, had to drop their production, weren't able to do what they wanted to do. And therefore, you know, the stock's price comes down. Record levels of inflation. It's absolutely insane. Rony, the war. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Essentially, you can see that there is a lot of reasons why EV stocks in particular would have been going down as of late. But with that being said, Adam Jonas said in a report that US electric vehicle maker Tesla may be facing an oversupply problem and the company's stock price may come under pressure in 2023. Now you keep in mind that Adam Jonas is a bull. He has a nice price target on Tesla right now. And they're already down absolutely massively from all-time heights. And he is still saying that, you know, right now when they're at about 100 low $100 a share, they could be facing a lot of pain going into, you know, next year. And I think a lot of people will obviously agree with that. And again, we look at Tesla vehicle production and deliveries for the fourth quarter 2022. Deliveries grew 40% year over year to 1.31 million. Well, production was up 47% to 1.37 million. So it was more vehicles produced than moved. Now, again, I don't think this is a really big deal. Those vehicles that were manufactured are obviously going to be sold and are going to be delivered. But still, it's it's not something we've really seen before and it is getting some people worried. The report noted that the demand for electric vehicles has come to an abrupt halt recently. Now, I would also like to point out that this is also going for new, you know, standard vehicles, gas-operated vehicles, whatever they are, and the second-hand vehicle market. 
the waiting time for new electric vehicles is getting shorter and shorter and the price is gradually falling electric car maker lucid faced customer cancellations i made a full video on this and rivian stopped taking pre-orders altogether Jonas said that with the launch of electric vehicles by many car manufacturers, the number of electric vehicles has increased significantly, and this is the first time since the car industry transitioned to electrification that there has been an oversupply situation. So we can take this as both a good and a bad thing. Um, it depends on the company. It depends on the company's stage of life. Obviously, Tesla would rather be able to deliver every single vehicle they produce straight away so that the balance sheet looks better, so that, you know, monthly and quarterly delivery numbers look better, just so that everything looks a little bit better in general. With some of the smaller players, you know, they, they're probably not going to be too affected by this whatsoever. And on that same kind of note, Morgan Stanley thinks 2023 could be a reset year for the EV market where the last two years of demand exceeding supply will be substantially inverted to supply exceeding demand. Within this environment, we believe players that are self-funded, so non-reliant on external capital funding, with demonstrated scale and cost leadership throughout the value chain from manufacturing to upstream material supply can be relative winners. By that rationale, they're looking at Tesla, Rivian, Frey. And names they're not looking at, you know, you have your Lucid, because again, they're not going to have their capital. They only recently went ahead and raised over a billion fisker and pretty much the large majority of names and again just to expand on tesla and what adam had to say in regards to tesla they concluded the year down by more than 65 percent from its peak which surprisingly isn't even much worse than the majority of ev stock it's actually better than an awful lot a lot are down 70 to 80 percent not necessarily on the year but from all-time highs and tesla is down a little bit more than that from all-time highs and while some have heralded this as the company's fall Mr. Jonas believes jumping ship may be premature, and according to the client note, Mr. Jonas thinks the stock may rebound by up to 122%. There are a couple of key notes. The price target for Tesla has been adjusted from 330 to 250, which would still be a 122% jump from sub 125. Two main factors Jonas cites as positive for the stock include the adoption of the Inflation Reduction Act, EV incentives, and its position in the market that remains poised for overall growth. So it's for those reasons Adam Jonas believes, you know, Tesla still is a force to be reckoned with, and I would have to agree with him. Um, one more thing about Tesla that's happened recently is they slashed their prices in China, which, again, some people are seeing as good, some are seeing as bad. They cut it in China for the second time in less than three months, fueling forecasts of a wider price war amid weaker demand in the world's largest autos market. And when you look at their competition and the numbers they are doing, you can see why Tesla would be willing to take a price cut to try to get a little bit more market share. Everybody is getting record monthly deliveries in China right now. Tesla needs to stay on top of things, and I think Elon and everybody else over there understands that. They cut prices on its best-selling Model Y and Model 3 electric vehicles in Japan, South Korea, and Australia, and what a person with direct knowledge of the plant said was part of an effort to help stoke demand for output from a Shanghai factory, its single largest production hub. And again, when you see that demand is not quite hitting production, this is the kind of thing you want to see as an investor happen. CEO Elon Musk said radical interest rate changes had affected the affordability of all cars, new and used, and that Tesla cut prices to sustain volume growth, which again is what we as investors want to see. It does, however, mean the latest cut in China, along with another in October, and recent incentives for Chinese buyers, means a 13 to 24% reduction in Tesla's prices from September in its second largest market which is very, very considerable. And when you see that deliveries of Tesla's China-made cars hit their lowest in five months in December, Tesla's Shanghai plant, which was expanded last year, also exports vehicles to Europe. It, you know, it's got to raise eyebrows, and you have to do something, and maybe you have to take some slightly drastic actions, and that's what Elon is doing. That's what Tesla needs to happen. So we've gone through a lot of the bad, but what is driving EV market growth, and what does drive market growth? Automakers are committing more capital. By the end of the decade, total capital expenditures for the EV industry could reach $108 billion. Most certainly. Demand for EVs is strong. Nobody can argue this point. It truly is. Although EV ownership is relatively low today, Morgan Stanley's research shows that 29% of consumers are interested in purchasing an EV, and another 24% are interested in purchasing a hybrid vehicle. Those percentages will likely grow as EVs become more affordable, which they are as of this moment in time. EVs could reach price parity with gas-powered vehicle soon. At approximately 65000 for the average EV, it's, it's still a lot more than most people can afford. But again, if we look at Tesla's numbers in China's now, they start at $33,000. We are already, you know, meeting that price parity where it's not necessarily going to be more expensive to purchase a nice EV than it is to purchase a nice car in general. And public policy has decisively shifted towards favoring decarbonization, which again, you look at the likes of the Inflation Reduction Act and things along those lines, it's all to help EV realistically. 
In the US, 24 states and the District of Columbia have put in place some form of clean vehicle policies, including increasingly stringent emission standards, as well as rebates and other incentives for zero emission vehicles and related infrastructure. Globally, today, over 85% of car sales are subject to fuel economy and tailpipe CO2 emission standards. So again, they're the kind of things that are going to lead to the EV market continuing to grow. Now, if you follow this channel regularly, you might think, you know, I, I, I won't agree with certain things that are being said here in regards to, you know, the likes of Rivian and Tesla doing better because they are self-funded. They have demonstrated scale and things. But I really do. And if you really listen to what I've been saying as of late, I do think these are the kind of safer bets for the medium and long term. Yes, I'm still invested, you know, in my Neos, in my Charge Points, in my Lucids, which haven't demonstrated scale quite as much and aren't self-funded. But I can understand why, you know, Adam Jonas would say these things, and I do agree with him. So if you're looking for those safer kind of bets that still have large growth potential, these are the kind of stocks to be looking towards. But anyway, my friends, that is a video for all of you guys in regards to, you know, the electric vehicle recession, what to be looking to invest in in general right now. Just hopefully you're able to ask yourself some questions based off of this video when you finish watching that will help you with your investing decisions going forwards. If you did watch this video all the way till the end, you, my friend, are a true legend. I really do appreciate you. All I ask is that you hit that like button. And again, subscribe if you're new and would like more content. There is a lot more to be coming, baby. Daily uploads through January. We stick into it. Also, if you are interested in signing up to Seek and Alpha, that is the only stock market tool I actually pay for personally. And you can get 50% off using the link in the comment section or description down below for your first year. Trust me, guys, the value is absolutely immense. Anyway, guys, I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. I will see you in another video very soon. Peace.